I do have time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey y'all, it's me, look, it's Trey, I'm back. And I am so excited to have y'all back with me. And I know it's been months. It has been months since I have been on here. So I'm sorry, but y'all been with me. If you guys have been following me on TikTok, then you guys have seen me, you know, at least every other Sunday from now. And you definitely see me every week on TikTok. So uh, you still see me, let me say that. But y'all, I miss y'all. I really do. Can you see the background? Am I on the moon? I said I was gonna put myself in the, on the moon. I don't know if I actually did that. We'll find out. Cause if not, it looks like I'm being held hostage and this is like a hostage video. Damn. Speak into the camera. The United States government wants a million dollars. <laughs> Yo, I'm so glad to have you guys back. We are here with a video that it has not been suggested, but I actually came across and it's very, very doggone interesting. This dude is a piece of crap. This wasn't a suggested video, which is surprising because I've done a lot of suggested videos lately, but not this video. Before we actually get into our video, a word from our sponsors. Taylor Port. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. They're not actually one of my sponsors. I just drank it for free. Taylor Port. The words are written backwards. But why? It'll fuck you up. Y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is Alan the Storyteller. If you guys don't already, make sure you guys follow me on TikTok. Um, also follow me on Clapper, Instagram. I have a Facebook page that I'm working on. There's a lot going on, so I'm, I, I apologize. I apologize. I, I think I have been talking too much. This is already going to be kind of a lengthier sided video. So let's go ahead and let's get into shit. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about John Joseph Fortenberry. Now, he is technically a serial killer, but they kind of wanted to, they were kind of on the fence on calling him a serial killer or just a spree killer. But this guy is a, he's a douche and a liar. This little bitch is what he is. So today we're going to be talking about John Joseph Fottenberry. Now Fottenberry, I thought it was Fortenberry, but it's actually Fottenberry. That's what it is. That's his name and we're sticking to it. But anyway, so John Fottenberry was born July the 4th, 1963 from New London, Connecticut which is a good name, you know, if you, know, you can tell people, hey, I'm not from London, I'm from New London. I don't think people will get the joke unless you're from New London or you know of it. But now you guys know, so I'm expanding the world in that possibility. Now his early life with his parents was actually pretty crappy, but his dad really wasn't interested in him. And y'all know boys can have daddy issues too. Y'all joke about women having daddy issues, but boys can have them as well. And so without his dad really liking him, you know, he just kind of, Mm, he was missing that thing in his life and after his little sister was born his dad just left the family he was like f all y'all i don't want to be with y'all i'm tired of y'all it is what it is after his dad which is john joseph fottenberry senior after his dad you know walked out of the picture because he was tired of everybody the mom went on to marry two other guys now these guys that she went on to marry turns out to be abusive as well which sucks you know that's like a, a thing with all these doggone stories like how do people just abuse kids and worse how do you let someone else abuse your kids like dang not not just you you just let anybody do it anybody can hit whore so these other two guys were abusive to uh john as well and so he really his childhood sucked there was actually one instance where he got beat and i mean bad he got beat bad because they asked him to go get potato salad and he got it confused and got tomato salad, which I don't know if tomato salad was a thing. But yeah, when he came home, he was like, here, Papa. And that man, wham, beat him up, beat his ass. Like, dang. And also on top of being abusive, his stepdads really didn't want anything to do with him either. So we are already off to a horrible start with this dude. Now, during their time of his mom with these other guys and you know their family just kind of moving around a bit they moved around they went from ohio they went to hawaii they eventually went to rhode island and along the time along their way john was getting in trouble with the police he was doing a lot of shit he probably shouldn't have been doing one of the issues that he had with the police all right this dude was in atlanta he was in atlanta and he stole a vehicle he stole someone's car out there in atlanta and he was on a run they didn't catch him at least not immediately now he was caught 
But the man got caught because he went to a, a convenience store out there in Alabama. He was in Alabama and went to the convenience store and he didn't pay for his gas. And so the people got him from there. Now, as he got older, there was a few things that he was dealing with. One of the things that he was dealing with, because of all the neglect and abuse that he suffered from his you know, dads, stepdads, and you know, all the stuff that was going on, he started having these delusions. One of the delusions that he would have is he felt like there was monsters that was coming to get him and so he and in his words he said he would get like an imaginary hammer to imaginary nail his sheets to the bed so no evil monsters could get him while he was sleeping and y'all that made me sad speaking of all that it just got worse as he got older not necessarily with feel like monsters but his mental state really just wasn't there so now we're in the year 1985 his mom who he has been consistently close with his whole life or whatever she died <sighs> she's out the picture no more and they were close so it you know with him already having these mental issues going on it really sucked and so because of this his way of coping was to you, you, I'm not gonna rugs with a D y'all get what I'm saying and the drink like me I'm dealing with another type of trauma and yet this started really like bringing him down a bad path when I say a bad path so considering that he already had a trouble being you know with his mental state while his after his mom died and he was coping with alcohol and drugs he finally moved on to become like a truck driver However, because of his work ethic, y'all, he kept getting fired from this job and that job and that job. So he couldn't really keep a long-term position. They were all short-term truck driving positions that he had. And the entire time, this man was still having run-ins with the law. But they were minor offenses. Nothing really major, but still, you know, grow your ass up. Okay, y'all, this is when the story is, is about to get a little, uh, it's about to get a little weird. A little weird is it's kind of like putting it lightly. All right, so it's the year 1986. His dad, his bum dad, the dad who's the senior, his biological bum dad, the one who wanted nothing to do with him. Remember him? Yeah, he's still there. So the dad comes around and, you know, they kind of connect and whatever. And the dad helps him move to Connecticut with him. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Oregon. Oregon, not Connecticut. The dad helps him move to Oregon. So the dad, after the dad had left his, you know, his real mom, whatever, them years ago, after the dad left his mom, the dad actually found somebody else. Her name was Olivia. He and Olivia got together and they had two sons together. So John Jr., the one we're talking about here, the main character of this story, he has a stepmom and he has two stepbrothers. The dad helped him move in with him. As soon as he got there, shortly afterwards, the dad actually moved out. He was like, I'm done with this. It is what it is, whatever. And he took the two sons with him, leaving John Jr. and Olivia at that house. Y'all, they started hunching. And when I say they, I mean the stepmom, because they were still married. He just left. They were still married. They started hunching, the stepmom and John Jr. What? Man, banging the stepmom is kind of like the beginning of a lot of very sketchy videos that you can find on the internet nowadays. And you know the crazy thing about that, y'all? It wasn't just a one-off thing. It wasn't even just a short-term thing. Y'all, y'all, they stayed together for 15 years. You know what? Now thinking about it, I wonder if the dad left because the stepmom was being inappropriate with J Oh, I bet you that's exactly what it was. He found out that that man was hunching on his wife and he left and took the sons. That's why she didn't get the kids. I was also wondering, like, why didn't the wife get the kids? Normally the wife would, but no. See, y'all, I should be a, a private investigator. <laughs> anyway, let's continue with the story. So now that he's banging his mom, he decides, oh, let me continue with this crappy choice of becoming a truck driver. Nothing wrong with being a truck driver. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it was a crappy choice for him because he did not have the work ethic to be a truck driver. See what I'm saying with that? So he continued to be a truck driver and he continuously lost his jobs. And that was just kind of like a, his, his whole personality. Now, in the year 1990, 
1990. The sky is blue, the sun is out, there are cars on the road, everyone's just saying hi and bye. This is a wonderful scene of camaraderie throughout all of the state of Oregon. Now, John is, you know, he's moving about doing his thing and he comes to a truck stop. At this truck stop, he meets a man. This man's name is Donald Nutley. He walks up to Donald. He's like, hey, bro, how you doing, man? Great. That's awesome. You know, we should hang out. We should... We should totally hang out. And Donald was like, oh my gosh, you're right. We, we should hang out. Guess what, dude? I'm going to Mount Hood and I'm doing some target practice. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming when they said target practice, I'm assuming with, I don't know. I don't know what they've been shooting at. And so John was like, yeah, let's go to Mount Hood. And do a little bit of target practice, sir. Stranger, you perfect stranger. And they thought it was good. I'm gonna tell y'all my, my theories when we get to the end. I'm gonna tell y'all my theories on what, what I actually believe. So John followed him all the way to Mount Hood and they, they did whatever. But that was actually the last time that Donald Nutley was seen alive, period. Now, shortly after Donald actually went missing, some people did put him on the missing persons report. So, you know, they did do that. However, I mean, he was missing for a while. His body was eventually found, but it was months later. On April 1st of 1991, his teeth, his skull with a good clean bullet hole was found in the forest of Zigzag. Now, I actually had to look up what Zigzag was. So I was like, Who, what, that, what, is, what is Zigzag? What is this? There's a place in Oregon called Zigzag. Zigzag, Oregon. I'm sure it's a population of 15 people, but it's out there. And this is where his body was found, April the 1st, 1991. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did not find out that it was him until, you know, later when he confessed. So now we're in 1991, February. Now keep in mind, Donald Nutley has not been found at this point in time. He's still a missing person, you know, out there in the abyss but he's moved on. So February the 1st of 1991, John was going to this place called Zion, Illinois, and he happened to stop at this pilot truck stop in Bloomsburg, New Jersey. He loves a good truck stop. But while he's at this pilot truck stop in Bloomsburg, New Jersey, he comes across this guy. His name is Gary Farmer. Now Gary Farmer is from Springfield, Tennessee. He's 27 years old and he was actually going cross country for Henderson County, New Jersey. So he's going to New Jersey and John is going to Illinois and they meet at this pilot truck stop. So they're at this truck stop and John, you know, they're having a conversation. He's, you know, whatever. Then all of a sudden, Gary supposedly came on to John and John is so, you know, masculine. How dare another man talk to me? So he freaked out and yeah, he killed the man right there at the truck stop. Not only did he kill him, he robbed him. He robbed the man, he took his knife, he took his watch and he took $40. So like, but yeah, he, he, he came on to me. He said I was handsome and so I robbed and killed him because he said I look good. But after he did this, he stuffed him into the sleeping cabin at the back of the truck and just left him. Just left him there, robbed him, and then left. And his body was not found for a few days. And even after it was found, it wasn't identified until later. My boy John, he's on the road. He can't be stopped. So John, later on, down his, you know, whatever, he's down the street and he's hitchhiking. Got that thumb out, you know. Probably showing a little leg. Who knows what he's doing at this point in time. And he finally gets this nice hitchhiker. The hitchhiker that he picks up is this guy. His name is Joseph Darren Jr. Joseph, the guy, the good Samaritan that picked him up on the side of the road. Which, this is another one of the reasons why I would never pick up a hitchhiker. But Joseph, he was divorced. He had an ex-wife. He had two daughters. And he was the data supervisor at the Community Mutual Blue Cross and Shield. Whatever that is, I guess it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. I don't know, but that's where he worked it. On this particular day that we're talking about, Joseph had actually just spent some time with his daughters. He, you know, had a good day with her, with them, excuse me. And then he dropped them off at his ex-wife's house. And while he was on his way home, that's when he came across John, who was hitchhiking. 
had the thumb up and he picked up John. After John picked this man up, he, you know, got in a car, then he robbed him and he killed him. You know, the same thing. They didn't find him immediately. It wasn't until March the 20th where there was this guy who was actually driving a car and they just turned down this road and looked off to the side and there they found Joseph. March the 20th. So this guy been out there for a minute. After he did it, he stole his car and then he just went just went across just I'm gonna do find something fun to do and that fun thing that he did was he went to a party where he met another girl and this girl that he met at this party her name was Christine Ann Guthrie she was 32 years old he met her at the party and after they had a good time together he was like yeah let's let's hook up and she was like yeah let's hook up so they went back to the hotel <sighs> The hotel that they went to was the Silver Sands Motel in Rockaway Beach. They went there and I'm sure they rocked the night away, but that was unfortunately the last time that Christine was also ever seen alive. This man offed her too, and presumably he robbed her as well. But now let's not forget, let's not forget about uh, John, uh, Joseph. Let's not forget about Joseph. So Joseph, remember he dropped his daughters off and then he picked up this guy here. His co-workers noticed that he wasn't coming up for work. So after he missed two days of work, his co-workers are the ones who actually filed like a missing person report for him. And that's when the investigation for John went out. The police started their investigation and that's when they found out that Joseph's credit card had been swiped about 25 times during his absences from work. So that was a big red flag. And they also followed this trail down to the airport in Portland, Oregon. This is important because after John had killed Christine, after he killed Christine, this man drove to the airport and bought a plane ticket to Juneau, Alaska, which is where they found Joseph's vehicle. So he just abandoned the vehicle, went to the airport, got a plane ticket, went to Juneau, Alaska. This man is a piece of crap. How many people is this so far? So he's already killed, uh, he's killed Donald Nutley, Gary Farmer, uh, uh, Joseph Darren Jr., Christine Ann Guthrie, and for no reason. These were people that were helping him out. So after this bum made it all the way to Juneau, Alaska, he decided that he was going to just get a job, you know. And this was, you know, y'all see what time frame this is, what, the 90s? The 90s when all this crap was going on. It wasn't like it is today. You can just walk up and be like, hey, my name is such and such. And they were like, sure, okay. And, well, and also it was a it was a boat it was fishing you know, I guess they don't need your verification for that I don't know but anyway the man went up to a boat and he was like hey I want a job and they was like sure come on so he started becoming a fisherman even though he was horrible at that job as well and yeah he just kind of continued that cycle of being a bum bitch and by continuing the cycle of being a bum bitch, remember, he can't keep a job. This man cannot keep a job at all. So after he was a fisherman for X amount of days or X amount of time or whatever, guess what? He got fired from that job as well. And when he got fired, he, he was like, oh my gosh, I'm just like the worst person on earth. I, no one wants to hire me. I can't keep a job. Like, yeah, that was, that was the height of his issues right there. He decided to go to this bar. He goes to this bar, he orders a drink, he's drinking, he's feeling bad, and this guy there kicks up a little conversation with him. So this guy, his name is Jefferson Diffie. He's 39 years old, he's a local, he's at the bar, he sees this man who's on the verge of crying, and so he's trying to pick him up. He's like, hey man, what's going on? What's going on? And so John goes and he tells Jefferson, he's like, hey, or Jeff, I'm calling him Jeff. He tells Jeff, like, hey man, like people around me just won't stay i'm losing all my jobs i just came out here to be a fisherman because it's like my life's dream and jeff's like oh you poor bitch you know what come to my house i'll make you feel better i promise y'all i have a theory i have a theory but yeah so jeff jeff invites him to come to his condo and he's like okay he gets to the condo this time he stabbed and he stabbed his man like 18 times just wham wham stab stab stick stick all that stuff 18 times 
And then after he did that, he stole his wallet, he stole his ATM card, and he stole a nine millimeter handgun. The next day after he stole that ATM card, he went to the ATM and he took out $400, you know, just for shits and giggles. And then he left. He was like, okay, I got what I wanted. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Went on about his life. Jeff also has some good co-workers. It's always the co-workers because they're the ones that gonna know you quicker. Your family ain't gonna notice and not because they don't love you, but your co-workers, they see you every day. So anyway, so his co-workers, they noticed that Jeff had not been at work a couple days, so they told the police. The police do their investigation. They look around and bada bing, bada boom, they came across John. Now remember, they had been looking for John since, they had been looking for John since he left uh, Joseph's uh, car at the Oregon airport after you know, y'all know what I'm talking about yeah so they had been tracking this man down since so it wasn't hard they were able to track this man down to a hotel they came in busted you know guns drawn police police what's going on this is it this is it and they finally bust him there inside of his hotel room they found just a card his ATM card and that's when they knew they was like okay this is the guy this is the guy we got him we got him. And he immediately started confessing to all six of the crimes. Now, if you may be counting, listen to what I just said. I just said six crimes, which you may be counting. We only talked about five people. We talked about Joseph. We talked about Greg. We talked about Christine. We talked about Jeff. And we talked about Donald. But he confessed to six crimes. Who is the sixth person? Well... Sit your ass down and let me tell you about another crime. And this one made me upset. 1984, before all of this spree stuff going on, because this official spree started in 1990. But in 1984, after this bum bitch lost his job yet again, he went to a park. And at this park, he was crying and he was drinking and he just felt so bad about himself and yeah, yeah, yeah. And at this park, he met this dude. His name was Richard Combs. Now, Richard was a 25-year-old guy. He was um, homeless. Yeah. And so he was kind of just walking around this park in Oregon. And so while they were at this park, he, you know, got upset because he didn't have a job. And he stabbed Richard. What do you mean you get upset because you lost your job? So you stab a random stranger, sir. But that's what he said. He confessed. He told the police. Now, the crazy thing about this is there was a problem. There was this guy. This guy's name was Michael. A dude named Michael used to ride motorcycles. He had already confessed to killing Richard. But now the thing is that after Michael had confessed to killing Richard, Michael had came back and recounted. He was like, you know what? He's like, I don't know what was wrong with me. I didn't do that shit. I, I don't know what I was talking about, bitch. Like, no, I didn't do that. And, and even with this and him having a confession about Richard, y'all, they never pursued any charges for Richard. Maybe because it was like at that point in time, they knew they were going to get him from other stuff. So it was like, oh, what's the point? Or it could have just, I don't know. And with that being said, I don't know what they did to a dude named Michael. I don't know what Michael is up to. They said Michael recanted his confession, but I don't know if he's still in jail. I don't know what happened with Michael. Michael? Who is it, Michael? Michael who? And now, on top of them not pursuing the thing for Richard, there was another case about another trucker that had also been killed in New York. And they was like, well, he most likely killed him as well, but, you know, forget that one too. Yo, I don't get it. I don't get it. So they got him for all these murders, right? They got him for at least five murders. Mm -hmm. They got him for five murders. He did a full recording of his confessions. It was about a four-hour recording. They recorded him doing his confessions. They walked out of the room, you know, tried to put him in prison, whatever, whatever. After his confessions, this man, he tried to unalive himself with some razors to his wrist. Y'all know what I'm saying? And yeah, so they kind of... They came back and they saw this man like bleeding out on the floor, but they were able to save him, which why? Why not just why not just let nature run its course at that point in time? Why save him? It's costing taxpayer money. And now let's get to the charges because we're almost done here. The official charges that they got J John. Oh, excuse me, the, the liquor. It's the liquor. But the official charges that they got John for him, 
They got them for Joseph Darren. They got them for Jefferson Diffie. And they got them for Greg Farmer. Now, they, they got all these things supposed to be tried up in Alaska. Now, for some extra charges and stuff like that as well. For the uh, for Jefferson. So what he did, he confessed to killing Jefferson in, in, in the, with the plea deal. All the other charges as it relates to Jefferson will be dropped. So some charges was going to be dropped and he was just confessed to the murder of Jefferson. So he did that. Now, he was given 99 years for Jefferson. Now, after they gave him his 99 years for Jefferson, they took him to Ohio so they can uh, get him for Joseph. And in Ohio for Joseph, they were, they were running big. He got the death penalty. He got the ultimate penalty up there in Ohio. They don't play around with him. They got him for that. But now, they had to get him for somebody else. So then they sent to New Jersey for Gary. And with Gary, he got a life sentence. They got a life sentence for uh, Gary. But now, I was looking. I was like, okay, so at least like two people. What about Donald and what about Christine? I don't know. 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 At this point in time, I don't know what what about them. They just said, F them. Forget it. We got them for a couple. Let, let that be that. And finally, on July the 14th, 2009, July the 14th, 2009, he... He died by lethal injection. He died by lethal injection. And this man had a pretty big meal for his last meal. Let me tell you what this ninja ate. Okay, so this man ate for his final meal. I don't know if he had three stomachs or what. He had two eggs sunny side up, fried potatoes, two pieces of fried bologna, four pieces of wheat bread, two pieces of wheat toast with butter, you know, there's different wheat toast and wheat bread. I, so six pieces of bread. He had four slices of tomato, one side of lettuce and mayo. That oh, oh, sounds so disgusting. But lettuce and mayo. It's not the lettuce part. I like that. It's the mayo. <clears throat> Where are you going? God, that was an actual real reaction. I cannot stand that. <laughs> Two. Three Musketeers bars and two packs of Reese's. So he ate all that and then he died. Why feed him if you're gonna kill him? And that's like three homeless people that you could have fed with it. Like what the freak? Okay, time for my theory. So let me tell you, I believe that he was hunching at least some of those dudes, maybe not all of them, but he was hunching some of them dudes. And then after, you know, you get that post-hunch clarity. I think after that, he was like, oh, what am I doing? And then he snapped. If that's not the case, then he used the flirtatious part of his relationship with them, whatever it was, to try to lure them into the false insecurity. But that thing he said about the one guy who had uh, was hit on him and he went crazy. Nah, they did so. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. That is the story uh, of John Joseph Fodberry. This man sucks. Sucks. He is now dead. All right. That's it. That's all I got for you. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I know it's been a minute since I've been here, and I am going to try to be more consistent with these as well. Um, but I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are making smart decisions. If you have any suggestions, make sure you guys hit me up in my DMs. You can comment here. I will check my comments. But hit me in my DMs, especially on TikTok and Instagram. I do check those. Um, also, make sure you guys are subscribed. And I will see you guys next time. I love y'all. Stay safe. Peace out.